Welcome everybody. This is our first edition of Build, Lead, Grow. We are here today in Pasadena, California with Steve Tobia. Thank you, Steve, for being here. My pleasure. Uh, so I brought you here today to talk about inspiring stories about entrepreneurs who've been able to build successful businesses in today's world. Um, you own a magazine company called The Dreams. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and tell me a little bit about that just to start us off. Um, my background has always been in marketing and uh, political campaigns and demographics, psychographics, and thought there was a need in the marketplace about 10 years ago for a new media company here in Pasadena and downtown and started one. Um, what was your initial inspiration for doing this? Was it just the right need and time, right fit, or? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. It's not about inspiration. It, it's all about business. Um, most entrepreneurs fail to understand that a business plan has to be developed. So is there a need in the marketplace? Yes. And then from there, you build a, a business plan and a marketing plan rather than, oh, I want to create something, but right, you don't know right. anything about it. Well, the vision, again, is going back to, is there a need in the marketplace? And so 10 years ago, or let's go back even 15 years ago, I had written a book for Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation that broke Southern California into six regions, one of the regions being San Gabriel Valley and downtown. So with that, I knew that there was going to be a need in that marketplace specific about lifestyles. And then I did my research and then decided to purchase a small newspaper and expand it into this four hubs that's downtown L.A., Pasadena, San Gabriel Valley, Burbank, Glendale. Okay, excellent. That was a perfect transition to my next question was you know, the first steps that you took to start to fill this out. That was obviously you're talking about psychographics, defining your target audience within Southern California. But then what other steps did you take to initially grow this business and to start building it? Well, you know, we talk about it. It's a business plan. So I am going to keep going back to that. Okay, so absolutely, no. the uh, basic business plan, marketing plan, are what's called the four Ps. I've added the fifth P. Okay. So is there a need in the marketplace? And the answer was yes. We have new demographics, psychographics, Asian investments, Middle East and Eastern moving in to these regions. I've seen so, a lot of those themes in your magazine. In the magazine. So there was a need in the marketplace. Um, in terms of the four Ps, and I've added the fifth, which is power, product, pricing, and placement. And what I mean by power first is even though you may have an idea to create a new business model, do you have the resources? Do you have the connections? Do you have the sponsors to take your vision to the next level? Then you create your product, then you look at your pricing, placement, where am I gonna have it? And then you go to your promotion. Unfortunately, most people jump in as entrepreneurs thinking, oh, I have this great idea. Right. And they jump rather than writing their business plan. So I looked at who is currently advertising in this marketplace in print and digital? Would they convert their dollars over to me? Who would be my first sponsor? So that's the power. You can't have a business without a engine, a power engine um, to do it. So what um, obstacles did you face? You know, you have a plan and everyone knows anything that can go wrong usually will go wrong. Um, I've learned that the hard way. I'm sure you have as well. Um, what obstacles did you face while building this? I, th I think any business has obstacles and you have to be strategic and do your SWOT analysis. You know, again, I go back to my corporate training. Uh, what are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Obviously a threat at that time was, are people gonna continue to buy print advertising? Are they gonna buy it at a local level? Um, what companies sustain print advertising and are they going to be in business? So obstacles are always identifying where your opportunities are, but they also may be a threat. Um, I think a strength that you have to have, at least in the media, is you have to know your market. Um, I knew my market. Um, weaknesses in terms of obstacles, I think that creating a staff, and we've we're going to talk about leadership and staff is always the most difficult in any business that you have. Um, do you, are you able to recruit the right people and are they able to share your vision and passion to execute? Right. 
And that was excellent. You were absolutely right. That's the next question I had was, how important was building the right team for this business? What things did you do or what things did you look for for the right kinds of people that you needed to hire to work here? That's a whole controversial issue. Um, in my previous businesses, um, I learned a process called the Enneagrams. And the Enneagrams really are very similar to psychological profiles. You have to pull a team together where people have a certain psychological skill set. If you're the leader and the CEO, you have to have vision, you have to be clear, you have to be strong, you have to be articulate, external and internal. Then you have to pull the right people together that can execute. Someone has to be the detail person, someone has to be a team member and, uh, or a team manager, and that's what I look at first. Um, not necessarily a skill set. You know, one of the things I always talk about is in marketing and business, it's the power of the idea. Um, I was a Coca-Cola executive when back in the 80s, and you can think of some of the most um, great marketing and advertising that came out in the 80s. It was the power of the idea, not the technology that we used. So you're filming me today in equipment that 30 years ago we didn't know, but you're videotaping me. It's the same thing about an ad campaign. It's the same thing about the a business. Do you have a power of your idea and is it going to work? So you have to have, find people psychologically first, not because they know a program really well. That'll come later, you know, but people that know programs and tools are, I say it, they're a dime a dozen, but the people that are able to execute a vision and understand the vision of the leader and what tools they take to get it happening is secondary. So sometimes it's very difficult to right, find. Absolutely. And, then, and so the culture, you would say, is more important than the skill set and how they fit into your vision and how, what they can do to accommodate that. I think their, the culture is important and their personality and psychological way of thinking. If you find, in, one example I've always used, you never want your CFO to be your creative director, and you never want your creative director to be your okay. CFO. That makes sense. So sometimes people would be like, he or she have these great financial technical skills, but by the way, can you also do creative? Or you get a creative person, and can you manage my accounting? Well, it's not going to work. Right. It's not going to work. Right. And you, uh, you know, mentioned leadership, and you being the leader of this. What kind of leader uh, do you see yourself as? I think I see myself as a strategist first. Um, I enjoy strategy. I enjoy politics, public policy, which plays a lot into business and marketing. Absolutely. So 20 years ago when I wrote the book for Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation and talked about the Asian migration here, people looked at me and didn't quite understand. But when you look at our, the entry point in Monterey Park, the top school districts, the uh, political uncertainty, both in um, Hong Kong and Taiwan, as well as China. And you see that vision and you're clear about it, but sometimes people don't see it today. They're right. like, well, no, Pasadena is going to be a quiet community and downtown LA will really never develop. And if you look at the strategy as a strategist, you're saying eventually those billions of dollars are going to come to the United States right. because you understand the social and political changes that are taking place in the world. If China was not a major economic power, I would not be doing what I'm doing today because this region would not have the billions of dollars of investment coming into it. Right. And we would be like any other suburban areas where baby boomers are retiring and who's following us yeah. is not our children. And it really sounds like you were the thought leader on this whole idea of influential cultures coming into Southern California and really changing a lot of what's been going on around here. You found that to be an effective way to get what you want done, accomplished? Yes and no. Um, I think as a entrepreneur, um, and after having a large corporation, having been in corporate America, I see myself as a, as a leader and an 
articulating visions and strategies that I then bring people in to help me execute. That's a different type of leader. You could be a leader that wants to develop an organization to build your business to be acquired. Well, you're going to have a different set of skills right. or desires. Um, at this point, I enjoy being an entrepreneur with a small team. When I had my other company, I had eight offices, so I needed to look at other leaders in those right. eight offices. So I think sometimes entrepreneurs need to take a moment and say, what do I really want in five years? You know, am I going to be happy with a small business that I'm personally involved with? Or do I want to grow a business with multiple offices, right. multiple divisions, and then suddenly you're not involved in the creative or entrepreneurial desire. You're really running a company. Right. You don't have the client relationships. You're just managing a, a massive organization. How would you say leadership differs in the corporate setting versus, say, a small business setting like this where it's you and a couple other people? What have you learned about leadership through that kind of transition and that difference? I always use an example. I did um, work for the chairman of Blue Cross of California, and they were looking to convert to WellPoint, which is now publicly traded. And Leonard said to me, you know, as a public benefit corporation, I come to work every day of what I can do to improve our product and quality for our members. When you're a CEO of a publicly traded company, you come in every day of what's my financial returns to my stockholders. So as an entrepreneur, I enjoy coming in and creating and taking a risk and building something that I can be proud of and that I believe. In the end, the money does come. But that's a different mindset right. versus going in and saying, cut costs, cut, improve. And it's all about the bottom line. And um, at this age, I've learned that the bottom line, and if that's all you seek to do every day, then you need to get the right financial guy on board and not necessarily the visionary and entrepreneur. Right. So then what skills do you see as being required as a leader to really make what you're doing work? I think leaders, uh, and we write about it, have three to four key characteristics. You have to have a clear vision of where you want to take your team, your company, or whatever you may Absolutely. Be. You have to look at the top of the mountain and say, I want to be there. Second, you have to have a passion, an unending passion that you believe in that mission and you want to get there. The third is you also have to have experience and knowledge. And that experience and knowledge comes from a variety of areas. You need to learn how to write a business plan. You need to learn competition. You need to learn all of those things. So when you combine a vision and a passion and a knowledge base, then you're a great leader. In America, we don't even have great leaders in politics anymore. Unfortunately, that can happen sometimes. We're down to minor details. And at the end of the day, no one is talking about where and how do we get America to be a power again. We talk about little details. So I think even a leader in a business has to be clearly articulate on the vision. Uh, they have to have a passion and strong knowledge. And that's what makes a leader in any organization. That's excellent advice. Let's move on to a sec for a minute. Um, my favorite topic, marketing, um, and one of yours, I'm sure. Uh, what, as a magazine, um, you need two kinds of customers. Correct me if I'm wrong. You need your subscribers and you need advertisers. Is that fair to say? No. <laughs> okay, then I got it wrong. That's why I have you here. So you got to reverse yeah, it back. Me. I mean, I think it goes back to when you said earlier. You, if you have an idea, you have to have power first before the product. So are there people willing to pay for and support your idea? And those are sponsors. Um, I think most people forget that all media, whether it's cable, print, whatever, are driven by advertising sponsors first. Right. Your subscribers and all the rest are secondary. It's like doing a special event concerts, whatever it may be. If you don't have sponsors, then you're struggling for ticket sales. Right. 
So we have sponsors that support and sponsor our media company. And of course, then we have uh, consumers that are subscribers and buy it. But if you don't have the power of a sponsor that's willing to be behind your idea, then you're always going to run into problems. Right. The relationships come first a lot of the times. And relationships, be... right. You're pitching somebody to say, we're targeting the affluent um, market in downtown and Pasadena Foothills region, and we're targeting Asians. Is that a market your company wants to reach? Right. Yes. How do I work with you and how do you sponsor right. it? So you're not running around selling, you know, few dollar issues because you'll never make it. Yeah. How did you find these initial sponsors? Was it your ro Rolodex from the corporate world, just relationship building? I think it's be a great thing for audience to know how they can go and find these people who are willing to take a risk on their business, whether it's as a sponsor, as a partner. So what did you do to find these people? Well, I think it goes back to the business plan. It was part of the plan. It was part of the plan. It was, it was part of the plan. So, yeah, I, I mean, going back, I had knowledge, obviously, when we talked about it. I had a vision and I had a passion. And I was able to, to walk into, yes, you have some relationships. But when you're able to walk into another business person and say, this is the market I'm going after. It's your market. Here's an effective way that I can reach your market for you. It's more cost effective than the competitors. Will you join me and will you help build this product over the next 12 months? The answer becomes yes. Right. If you walk in and saying, oh, I have an idea of a new magazine. What do you think? People are going to look at you like, well, what? how, right. where, when. You had that so planned out. You have to have you... a plan. You right. have to have a plan. And I, uh, I had this question, um, but I think I'm already going to know the answer before I ask it. But you know, what do you attribute the success of your business to then? Was it the initial plan that you created? Did that plan change over time? I, th I, think, it was, I think it was the strategy. I mean, the, the new uh, branding that we have is we are the other LA magazine. Um, everything that's not on the west side we clearly defined our market. We're not a generic lifestyle magazine. We're very specific to our four regions. We're very specific in the um, editorial that we covered, cover. So having a vision, a commitment, uh, a passion, and knowledge, I, I, you know, it's really not that difficult. Right. But a lot of entrepreneurs fail because they're saying, oh, I want to create a new magazine. Well, why and right. who's going to support you you know I mean I could sit here and say we should have an arts magazine and we should have this magazine we could be doing a Hispanic language magazine I mean the magazines like food like digital like a car I mean you could come up with there's basically X number of what I call widgets in the world right right house cars food uh, how do you create something that's going to fill that niche, have a point of difference, and have the power to sustain it to a point that you're not worried over the next two right. or three years? And you've been talking a lot about this plan and vision and how essential that is. How has your plan or vision changed? Um, you said you've been doing this for 10 or 15 years. Last 10 or 15 years have been a lot ten of years. changes. 10, ten years. 10 years. 10 years. Ten years. Um, there's been a lot of changes in the last 10 years, though. I mean, smartphones, for one example. So how has your vision or plan had to change to adapt for some of these changes that have been going on in the world? It really hasn't changed okay. um, because we've added. So, for example, you're younger than me, um, but people of affluence. We, we target the top 1% to 2% of affluence. And people of affluence still want and do hold on to quality print magazines. Um, you don't go into and buy a $300,000 car with your smartphone. What a smartphone and internet does, what I've always called it, it's the new library. If you're interested in a brand new Porsche, you're going to go online. We expect you to go online and research it. But at the end of the day, living in Pasadena, you're going to say, now I'm ready to make my purchase and I'm going to go to Rusnik. Right. And you then want to see a print piece that gives you comfort. There's a human behavior of 
touch and feel. So all we've done is added, and we've always had internet, now we've added more social media, but at the end of the day, we're giving people a message and a kind of a, a unique feel to a magazine, print, video, web. Um, and, and I think that's, that's critical, just like social media. People are talking about social media. Well, social media has to come from something. So what you post, was create, there's a creation of a product or service somewhere. Right. So oftentimes people think that the tool, the social media tool, really is the product when in reality the product that you're selling using some of your clients. You're selling outdoor living for one of your clients. They still want to see it. It's not a tweet that says, right. come buy. It's the experience. And I it's think you know what right. technology does is enable us as business owners to connect with our customers in a way that we couldn't before. And in that sense, you know, stay top of mind. So when they do become ready to purchase or be more involved in what you are doing, that we can stay top of mind in that way. So I think that's been able to Right. And you know, when I talk about the power of the idea, the power of the idea is if you want a really nice backyard and you want patio, we have the best services and the best products. Tools then have become print, web, right. internet, events. Those, remember back to what I said to you earlier, you need to have people that understand the power of the idea and the power of the product. And people are getting locked into technical. Right. So, and the other issue people talk are lumping newspapers and magazines together. Print is not dead. In fact, it's growing in terms of luxury, lifestyle, and niche marketing. I don't need to go to a newspaper today to find out what happened in the Middle East. Social media or digital media has handled that. But people still on a Sunday or at the pool want a hard piece of a nice magazine right. with unique content with unique content very them. unique content right so tell me um about your plans for the future now how how do you see this and this plan taking you into the future what do you want to do with this i know we've had conversations off camera about this but i'm just curious for my audience what do you want to do for the future well right now we're on a growth mode for our digital media um so we have new applications we have our 301 top restaurants, so we're going all through our social media. Um, downtown Los Angeles, I actually just moved to okay. downtown LA. Um, so as we've been talking about the expansion, I now live on a 22nd floor high rise overlooking the wow, city. Wow, beautiful. Um, so our, our growth is definitely in downtown Los Angeles, I'm doing a lot more there, and obviously the digital and social media. And the quality of the magazine remains. We're just, you know, that's, we're staying on course. Right. Okay. Excellent. Um, well, then why don't you go ahead and tell my audience, uh, lastly, where they can go if they would like to find out more information about the Dreams Magazine. Okay. It's very easy. Uh, our website is www.otherla.com. Just think of otherla.com. We're on all the social media. You can find out more on meetadvisors.com and follow my channel. Thank you. Thank you.